Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends, today uh, we are going to start a new um, concept that is rights and we are going to have three lectures on rights, where today we are going to focus basically about uh, what is rights, how it is related to say obligation or claims and how certain rights are considered universal and necessary for the proper uh, and full growth of individual and his or her personality, whereas uh, some kind of rights which is um, understood as individual should have those rights because he or she is part of a particular community. So, group rights or community rights or um, uh, rights which is on the basis of um, individuals belonging to a particular community and so on. So, there is uh, this uh, discrepancies between those rights which is considered uh, universal such as human rights uh, and those rights should be made available to individual because of him or her being individual or member of um, uh, humanity and there should not be any discrimination on the basis of his uh, social, cultural, religious background and so on. Whereas, on the other hand, many scholars, particularly multiculturalists or um, communitarians have argued that individual is not just a self-defining individual, but also a member of a particular society or community and therefore, certain rights must be given to those individuals, especially who belong to a um, marginal or minority community and so on. So, there is this kind of discrepancies between uh, these uh, rights which we are going to discuss and then finally, we will briefly discuss the justifications of rights, its basic features and uh, different kinds of rights. In the next lecture, we will be uh, discussing these forms of rights or kinds of rights in some details and finally, we will discuss the human rights and relationship of rights with duties. So, to start with this idea of rights, we uh, can begin with Harold J. Lusky, a statement about rights, where he writes that rights are those conditions of social life without which no man can seek in general to be himself at his best. So, for man to be himself, to own his own personality, to develop his own character requires certain rights which must be recognized by the society or the state. So, those recognition of rights and also protection of those rights are essential for the individual to develop himself fully or to develop his own personality or character. So, there are certain rights, certain sphere of life where individual must be left free and this um, idea of certain sphere of life which must be free is something which we have discussed in uh, say uh, freedom or liberty and also in equality. The rights is something more than just the uh, condition of freedom or uh, uh, the understanding of individual being equal to the rest. Rights are certain entitlements, certain claims which an individual or in the case of group may have against the society or against the state. So, um, uh, rights are those claims which must be recognized by the society or by the state and the recognition of rights and protection of rights is uh, considered essential for the individual to uh, develop fully, to be himself or to be the best version of himself. So, um, 
this discourse on uh, rights are fundamental aspect of modern political philosophy. So, if you remember the um, 17th, 18th century uh, political philosophers arguing about say natural rights, uh, certain rights which individual um, has not because he is member of a particular social or political community, but because of natural law. So, uh, this uh, understanding of natural law or rights on the basis of uh, natural law has certain obligation for the society and state to recognize certain rights which is inalienable from the individual. And the individual is considered as the self-defining rational autonomous individual who knows what is good for him or her. And therefore, society and state must recognize this um, uh, certain rights for that individual to develop himself and herself uh, in the ways uh, which uh, he or she deems fit for themselves to, uh, uh, to become. So, uh, this discourse on rights are very fundamental aspect of modern political philosophy and it is understood as claims which are essential for the proper and full realization of individual potential. So, uh, first that rights, so discourse on rights we often heard from many quarters including individual and groups. So, now say in uh, modern times uh, or in contemporary times, we extend discourse on uh, rights from individual or from human to non-human such as animals and also to uh, natural phenomena like say river or mountain. So, in some nation states, there is also this recognition of uh, the rights of the rivers or the natural phenomena to exist alongside the human. So, there is this kind of extension of rights beginning from the individual or human being to the non-humans to the in, um, uh, such as animals or to the natural phenomena like rivers or mountains and so, so on. So, the ecological zone and uh, some other things are about this uh, idea about sustainability and right to sustainable growth and so on. So, uh, we will see a range of uh, rights in the discourse on rights and um, uh, there is always new addition depending upon the development and growth of the society which we will uh, discuss in a minute. Uh, so, uh, the idea is the very formation of modern state is based on certain assumption and one of the assumption for the formation of state is that it recognize the individual uh, as a um, right bearing uh, citizen or a member. And therefore, state has certain obligation to recognize certain rights of that individual and also must protect those rights. So, the very premise of modern state or political philosophy is based on this conception of rights which is uh, regarded as claims which are essential for the proper and full realization of individual's potential. Now, all the claims however, is not necessarily rights. So, the claims that an individual may have, it is not necessary that all the claims that individual makes against the society or the state can be automatically or necessarily be regarded as rights. So, um, in order for claims to be regarded as rights and there is this uh, difference between say claims and entitlements and rights. Claims and entitlements enables the individual to make certain choice, to do something or to get something done or to not do something. So, uh, the rights has some element of choice, some element of voluntary action on the part of the individual it enables, it gives the individual his or her due in the society or being member of that society and so on. However, all the claims or uh, the entitlements that an individual may seek from the society or the state may not be necessarily regarded as rights. So, for the claims and entitlements to be regarded as rights, the society or state must recognize them. 
So, the recognition of one's claim or entitlements is essential for making a claim or entitlement as a right. So, you know in uh, say for example, uh, in uh, contemporary India, there was debate about say uh, for example, right to information. Now, this demand was made from the below, from the community, from the grassroots workers or voluntary organization. They demanded that they have the right to know what the officials are doing or uh, what is the progress of certain projects or how much uh, money was spent on certain projects and so on. So, this right to information was for very long demanded by the grassroots workers, activist, organize, uh, voluntary sector organizations and uh, so on. But unless and until a state enacted a legislation or passed a law, thereby recognizing that demand, that demand was not regarded as right. Now, after enacting that legislation, Right to Information Act, the right to information has become a right. Similarly, there is a demand for say employment. Now, uh, this is merely demand which uh, an individual or group of individuals may claim against the, uh, from the society or from the state. But such demands or claims can be a right only when the state and society, society recognize those claims. So, say for example, in contemporary India, the uh, right to employment or right to food is something which we are going to have as a right, not merely as a demand or a claim uh, from the society or state. So, in other words, rights are recognized claims, those claims which are recognized by the society and the state. So, it is very important to understand that rights are basically claims or entitlements of individual, but not all claims or entitlements are uh, rights. For a claim or entitlement to be regarded as rights, the society or state must recognize them. So, in other words, rights are recognized claims. Now, rights protect the individuals from the arbitrary exercise of power by the state or society. So, uh, for the growth or full development of individual and his or her personality, it is required that individual as a self-defining. So, the understanding of individual here is a autonomous individual, a self-defining rational subject. Now, this self-defining rational autonomous subject must have certain rights which prevent the society and the state to interfere in certain domain of his or her life which is absolutely necessary for uh, him or her to develop his or her personality, to develop his or her character. So, in those area and now this definition of what those areas are what are those rights which is considered as essential for individual growth and personality is something which not unanimously agreed upon. And with the growth of uh, society, there is addition of new rights and so on. Yet, whatever be the understanding of those uh, areas, those rights are, it protects the society or state from interfering into those sphere or those domains of individual rights. So, it uh, protects the individual from the arbitrary exercise of power by the state or society. Thus, it is claims or entitlements of individual against the society or the state. So, there are gradual evolution of rights as I have been saying. So, what once regarded as fundamental, basic, natural rights of individual, we may add more rights to them and we see a kind of continuous extension of rights from say um, uh, at one point of time civil rights and political rights. So, civil right is something which is regarded absolutely necessary for the growth of individual. So, suppose when uh, discourse on natural rights were happening, uh, only the male member or only the white member were regarded as entitled to those rights and say these can be extended to women, but political rights for a very long time was the domain for uh, white 
uh, male member in the society and not the women. So for them to get this right to vote, that is political right, they had to fight a long battle, long struggle. So uh, the point is there is a constant extension or addition of new rights and we have then the development of rights from civil to political rights to then socio-economic rights and cultural and environmental rights. So no longer the civil and political rights are regarded as enough or sufficient for individual uh, growth. So for those who do not have their basic needs met such as right to food, right to shelter, right to health care and so on. So without that for them the civil and political rights make very little sense. So there is the gradual progression of um, rights where social and economic rights are regarded as important as civil and political rights and perhaps more important because it may makes enable the individual to exercise his or her political and civil rights. So then we increasingly now discuss about environmental rights such as right to clean air, right to safe drinking water, sustainable development and so on and so forth. So these are some of the extension of rights. Now increasingly focus is shifting towards say human rights and no longer merely the justification of rights comes from say natural right theory. Uh, now human rights theories argue that there are certain minimum rights which should be made available to everyone without any discrimination on the basis of say uh, his or her social, national, ethnic, religious background. So human rights, right to clean air, safe drinking water, sustainable development, right of children or unborn fetus or animal rights and so on. So there is a kind of constant growth from one set of rights to another and more and more kinds of right. So uh, the rights are of various types and with the progress of technology as society faces new threats or new challenges, there are new addition to rights. So the definition as well as the scope of rights are subject to change depending upon the development and requirements of a particular society. So uh, the society in 17th and 18th century had particular kind of requirement. So the rights that was deemed necessary for the growth of individual was different than the 21st century society faces different kind of challenges and in that kind of society individual requires different set of rights and therefore the scope of rights constantly change. So although there is a discourse on universal human rights which argued that certain minimum basic rights must be provided to everyone without any discrimination. However, there are many scholars or theorists who argue about the rights of the cultural minorities or what they call group differentiated rights. So not one set of rights which should be made universal and applicable to everyone. We must also be sensitive to the cultural or the social background of individual when we discuss about certain rights which must be recognized and protected by the state or society. So and there are also the contestations about the meaning and the scope of rights which we will see as we will move from this introductory lecture to understand different kinds of rights, different forms of rights and what are the inner tensions within those rights. And um, rights are then meant both for the individual as well as the groups or communities. So certain rights which individual may have is because of him or her being regarded as human. So human rights or universal declaration of human rights are such approach which uh, uh, argue that certain rights should be made available to everyone without any discrimination. Now the other kind of rights say for instance the rights of cultural minorities or ethnic minorities or immigrant groups or those who are from the uh, disadvantaged groups. Now the individual belonging to these communities require some differential treatment or differential kind of rights. So there are many theorists and scholars who argued about this group differentiated rights also. So rights in that sense simultaneously uh, belong to individual and also to the community and groups. The another crucial aspect of right is its connection with obligation and duties. So rights are meaningless if it do not invoke obligation or duties on the part of other. 
so one's person right or claims or entitlements necessarily requires other individual or groups or society or state to have certain obligation towards that individual and similarly same individual must also recognize the rights of others and therefore the others right becomes one's own uh, obligation to recognize or to extend those uh, rights to other individual also so one person rights or claims or entitlements is necessarily another person's obligations and to maintain a balance between the two is not always an easy task so some scholars who prioritize rights over obligation so they consider rights are something which is uncompromisable and it must have priority over say obligation whereas some other scholars like gandhi who give primacy to duty so gandhi used to argue that if the individual is willing to do his or her duty he will get automatically his or her due in the form of rights so what should be of prime importance for individual is his duty and not really the right however many scholars as we know uh, many societies groups and individual are more concerned more uh, in favor of uh, demanding certain rights getting those rights recognized by the society and also the protection of those rights so there are also this tussle between obligation or rights or duties and rights simply speaking right is about getting one's due to get what is due to someone as human being or as an individual or as a member of a group or community and this can be starting from the cultural religious community to the national community as well so the right is about getting one's due because of one is say human being or is an individual or as a member of a particular community and therefore uh, being this member of a particular community entitled that individual to demand certain claims from that community from that society or from that groups so to have a right then is to be entitled to do something or have something done so it's about choice it's about voluntary action which is different from obligation so for example right to vote or to speak is something which can be regarded as rights it is different from obligation obligation or duty is something which you do for others and there the choice or the claim of doing or not doing something is simply absent so let's uh, discuss the hobbesian idea of political obligation why we should obey the state because we ourselves have created that state or uh, that sovereign and by very nature of its creation then sovereign demand certain obligation and we are duty bound to oblige or to obey the sovereign so the obligation and duty as pointed out by hobbes is different from the rights so obligation is required for the rights to be enjoyed but it is not equal to rights so it's, it's necessary so rights and duty must go hand in hand but it is not equal to each other so obligation is what you are obliged to do for others for the society for the state for the other members in the uh, society but rights is your due your own entitlement or claims against other member or society or the state so rights are those claims that individual make against the state or society which need to be secured by law or the constitution so there are broadly speaking two kinds of rights legal and moral rights that we will discuss later on as well so basically there are different kinds of rights uh, like legal rights moral rights or human rights and so on however many theorists have argued that only the legal rights which has the force of law to uh, recognize and also to protect can be truly regarded as rights for moral rights or human rights it cannot be enforceable in the court of law however it has certain authority 
in the sense of the consensus, in the sense of uh, every uh, member in the society or every groups in the society recognize those rights. However, it cannot be enforced as say, legal rights can be. So, if you have certain fundamental rights or legal rights and if those rights are violated, you can take recourse to a court of law. But if your moral rights or human rights are violated, there are very less chance of, less scope of, of protecting those rights. Of course, there are international agencies such as UN bodies which tries to protect human rights and uh, so on, but it is not as uh, enforceable as the legal rights or uh, what we call uh, fundamental rights in different constitution, uh, constitution. So, the basis of these two rights that is moral and legal rights are different where former is legally enforceable, the later is not. So, rights regarded necessary for the individual to lead a good life with respect and dignity to help individuals to develop talents and skills and to ensure the well-being of not only individuals but also the society. So, the rights are necessary for these purposes. Now, some of the basic features of rights is that it is uh, rights are claims of the individuals and exist only in a society when others exist to recognize those rights. And these are the products of social living. Second, rights are recognized by the society as common claims of all the members of that society. So, rights are rational and reasonable moral claims that individuals seek to get recognized by the state and other members of the society. Third, rights are equally available to every member of the community and not to a particular member or a group of individuals or privileged members in the society. Right, if um, understood as claims is recognized by the society, then those rights are available to every member of that society and not to a selected few. So, uh, however, if there is some difference or some kind of preferential treatment given to certain groups or uh, individual from certain groups, then those uh, differences or differential treatment must be duly justified. So, the contents of rights keep changing as we have discussed from civil to the political to social and economic to the environmental rights and so on. So, the scope uh, or the set of rights constantly keep expanding. So, it keeps changing with the passage of time and new rights are included such as in India we have uh, seen say we have a set of fundamental rights and how right to education which was earlier not part of our fundamental rights are is now regarded as the fundamental rights. So, every child from 6 to 14 years of age must be given and this given is no longer the entitlements or merely the claim of the child. It is his or her fundamental right to demand from the state. So, the state has the obligation or responsibility to provide free and fair education or uh, to uh, a child from 6 to 14 years of age. So, now this right to education is very well regarded as the fundamental right. So, we see how an entitlement change into right and how increasingly the newer rights are added. So, right to life. So, what does it mean to uh, lead a life? or a good moral dignified life. So, Supreme Court through its judgment keeps expanding the scope of right to life that is enshrined say in Indian constitution under article 21. So, uh, similarly uh, MNREGA and RTI that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Guarantee Act and Right to Information Act as I have discussed before is, uh, are examples of the extension of rights or addition of rights. Now, rights are not absolute, there are always some reasonable restrictions on right that are deemed essential for maintaining public health, security, order and morality. So, rights are inseparably related to duties or obligation and there is a close relationship between the two. So, if I have rights, it is my duty to respect the rights of others in the society. So, without the simultaneous claim or entitlements on the one hand and obligation on the other, one cannot really realize true potential by merely claiming the rights. So, the claim 
that one makes necessarily requires the obligation of the other and similarly the uh, claims of the other requires the individual's obligation towards that other person right so there is a kind of intimate connection between rights and obligation although the both are not same so rights need enforcement and only then these can be regarded as rights so many people argue that only the legal rights are rights the rest of the rights say moral rights or human rights which is based on the discretion discretion means society may or may not enforce those rights but legal rights must be protected and if it is violated then the victim can take recourse to a court of law whereas some rights like moral rights which has the sanctity of the society and its moral concerns nonetheless it cannot be enforced in the court of law and therefore those rights are merely uh, claims or not as effective as legal rights are and many scholars and theorists therefore argue that rights are only those rights which has the backing of the law or uh, legal rights so these are protected and enforced by the laws of the state and it is the duty of a state to protect the right of the individuals now if you talk about the origin and justification of rights in the 17th and 18th century it was argued that individual carry certain rights which are inalienable and derived from the natural law so the natural law or the natural justice as a principle for adjudicating any contestations or any conflicts or any conflict of interest these are still being practiced especially in 17th or 18th century the idea of natural law was the basis for adjudicating certain rights that is considered as inalienable for the individual an individual has those rights not because it is recognized by the state or society but because it is given to him naturally through the natural law so these rights are therefore inalienable so individual are regarded as born with a set of rights in other words such rights are granted to individuals not by the state or society and therefore those cannot be taken away by the state or society because these rights are inherited by the individual from the state of nature from the natural law and state and society therefore has the obligation or responsibility to recognize and protect those rights of the individual so they argued those who believe in the natural theory of rights that society and state must protect those rights and their very legitimacy is based on their capacity to protect those rights of the individual some of the rights thus recognized are right to life liberty and property basically in law we will discuss it again in one later slide however in contemporary times rights are regarded necessary not only on the basis of natural law but on the basis of commonly agreed principles that individual need certain basic rights because they are human beings and in order to lead a worthy dignified life certain rights must be protected so these are the contemporary discourse on rights which is more about human rights and legitimacy and the origin of rights are not on the basis of natural rights or natural laws but on the basis of uh, individual regarded as the member of humanity or him or her being a human so this um, uh, being human entitle the individual to claim certain rights to claim uh, uh, certain uh, dues or certain entitlements from the society and the state so in recent year there are many theorists who argue about not only individual rights but also group rights or community rights especially the multiculturalist or the communitarians so in other words they argue about cultural rights which recognize individual not merely as a self defining autonomous subject so in these uh, discourse and partly in the human rights discourse individual is regarded as an autonomous individual or a self defining individual now these theorists uh, communitarian or uh, multiculturalist argued about the embedded self that is the self is part of or embedded in his or her social and cultural communities and this belonging to certain community which is social and cultural 
gives that individual meaning of his or her life or shapes his or her world view. So, when we discuss about his rights, we also must be sensitive to his social and cultural and economic backgrounds. So, then this negative and positive rights, where uh, negative rights, uh, so broadly speaking one can distinguish between two kinds of rights. One is negative rights and the other one is positive rights. So, negative rights is something which prevent the state from doing something, generally speaking. And positive rights are those rights which require the state to play a proactive role. So, for example, say right to privacy or right to certain fundamental rights, say freedom of a speech and expression, these prevent the state from restricting, from interfering, from doing something which violate these rights of individuals. So, it is a kind of uh, prevention or restriction on the state. The positive rights on the other hand requires the state to play some uh, proactive roles, say right to education. So, state must construct schools, recruit teachers to ensure that every children should have free and fair uh, education and opportunity for free and fair education. So, those are regarded as positive rights. So, negative rights are those rights that are held against the state and it requires very little public or collective action besides an established legal order that can guarantee the protection of individual rights. Besides that, negative rights is actually something which prevents the state from doing something. So, it suggests those spheres where the state is not permitted to enter or interfere, that is some sphere of individual lives which in normal operation of law should not be encroached upon by the state. For example, the right to property, right to privacy, freedom from arbitrary arrest and so on. So, in the exceptional or extraordinary circumstances, these rights can be violated by following the procedure established by law. But in normal operation of law, a state must not encroach or interfere with these rights of the individual and these are considered therefore, the negative rights. Now, positive rights on the other hand are those rights which give responsibility to the state to play a proactive roles in securing the rights of individuals or enabling him or her to exercise his rights more effectively. So, once uh, say for example, political and civil rights cannot be exercised effectively by those who are illiterate or poor and so on or uh, sick. So, it, a state has the role to provide medicine or free medicine or education to ensure that individual acquire the capability to exercise his civil and political rights more effectively. So, the state must take positive measures to protect the rights of weaker or vulnerable sections in the society or those who are caught in vulnerable situations. So, for them, the state has a proactive role uh, to play there. For example, the right to medical care, education, work, right to legal aid and so on are regarded as the positive rights. So, there exists oh, one can make this uh, difference between negative and positive rights. However, it should be treated as a part of continuum where both these rights are in some sense interconnected also for the proper or adequate development of the individual. Now, we will discuss briefly some forms of right which we will discuss again in the next lecture. Uh, the first is uh, natural rights. The natural rights are propounded by the social contract theorists basically who consider formation of a state on the basis of social contract among the free and autonomous individuals. Now, uh, these theorists are see Locke, Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau and in 20th century uh, this idea was used by John Rawls also in his uh, theory of justice. So, the natural right is propounded by the social contract theorists and theory of natural rights is most eloquently are articulated by John Locke. The proponents of these rights hold that people inherit certain rights from the natural law and before they come to live in the society, civil or the political society and state, they used to live in the state of nature. Now, in this state of nature, they enjoyed certain natural rights in the words of Locke, right to life, liberty and property. And therefore, they argue 
that society and state must recognize these rights, which is not something that is recognized by the society and state, but it is something which individual enjoyed in his state of nature. So, the state and society must recognize and protect these rights and they cannot take away those rights from the individual. So, uh, before Locke, Hobbes also propounded the theory of natural rights, which can be traced to his conception of a state of nature, where in the absence of any authority, people had absolute rights, which made the state of nature a kind of perpetual war of each against the all, because everyone's life was in danger. At the same time, those uh, the protection of life was of utmost concern for the individual. So, in protecting those rights, uh, everyone has this absolute uh, right to protect his or her life. Now, with the absence of authority, the life was always and constantly at risk or in danger, because there is a constant conflict, constant war of each against the all. So, the necessary precondition to end this anarchy or violence for Hobbes was to surrender those rights except right to life. So, very creation of Leviathan or sovereignty is to, uh, sovereign is to protect the right of life and that is very fundamental or absolute right of the individual. So, they surrender those rights to create a Leviathan or the sovereign which must protect those rights and therefore, the individual has the obligation to obey the sovereign, to obey the dictates of the Leviathan, which we will discuss at some other point of time. But Hobbes also argued about this natural right. Locke, however, postulated that man surrender only some of his natural rights on the condition that his fundamental rights, that is right to life, liberty and property shall be protected by the state. So, if the state according to law fails to maintain or protect these rights, men had the right to overthrow that government or that state. So, Lockean conception of a state is of minimal state, which must protect or recognize individual rights and its only task is to protect those rights and such rights are right to life, property and liberty. If the state fails to protect those rights, then the individual has the right to revolt against that state also. So, uh, thus it was Locke who tried to demonstrate how natural rights, that is rights derived from natural law, could form the basis of the principles of governance. However, many scholars and theorists have criticized these natural rights as being imaginary or excessively individualistic, because it focuses on the individual as a self-defining autonomous subject and also a historical. There is no historical evidence to prove that there was a state of nature. It is the hypothetical imagination that there exists a state of nature and in that state of nature human beings as an individual had certain rights and uh, the civil and the political society or the state must recognize those rights. So, many theorists and scholars argue natural rights as imaginary, accessibly individualistic and ahistorical. So, right requires its recognition by the society as claims for development of individuals and therefore, a state has the responsibility to protect those rights. Now, moral rights as we have discussed, uh, moral rights are those claims which are based on morality and ethics and they are backed by the moral authority of individual and society. These are based on the sense of fairness and justice. And, back by the, uh, and not backed by the force of law. That means, if a person violates any moral rights, there is no legal force to ensure its implementation uh, and so on. So, it includes commonly agreed rules or principle of good conduct, courtesy and behavior, which is commonly uh, recognized in the society. And unlike legal rights, it is applicable to all men irrespective of his nation, community, and social economic rights. So, legal rights inherently is in that sense limited to those members who are part of a particular community that may be the state or a nation, a state and so on. The legal rights are those rights, the next one, the legal rights are those rights which are recognized and can be enforced by the state. So, any violation of legal rights is punishable by the 
procedure established by law and law courts of the state enforce these legal rights. Now these rights can be enforced against individual and also against the government. So if the government or the state encroach or interfere with the individual rights, the court can prevent the state from interfering or encroaching these rights of the individual as well. So in this way, legal rights are different from moral rights and legal rights are equally available to all the citizens without any discrimination. So within the nation state, within a state, all the citizens and all the members of that state or nation state enjoy the equal right to have those rights, uh, those legal and fundamental rights and they can go to the courts if those rights are violated. The civil rights are those rights which fulfill the basic needs of the human life in society. So right to life, liberty and equality can be regarded as civil rights which is protected by the state. Now we will discuss in some details some of these rights in the next lecture. Political rights on the other hand are those rights by virtue of which citizens get an opportunity to participate in the political process of his or her community. So for example, the right to vote, right to get elected or right to hold public office is regarded as the political rights and also the right to criticize and oppose the government is regarded as the political rights. So the civil rights may be made available to everyone including the alien, but uh, political rights is something which is given only to the citizen of a particular country because it enables that citizen as an individual to participate in the um, political process of that country to determine the nature and the character of that uh, political process. The socio-economic rights on, on the other hand are those rights which provide economic and social security to the people and these enable all the citizen to make proper use of their civil and political rights. Now the basic needs of every person are food, clothing, shelter or medical treatments and so on. Without the fulfillment of these basic rights, civil and political rights are of very less significance. So for those who are poor, those who are sick or those whose basic needs such as food, clothing or shelter are not met, they are less likely to, uh, to take their civil rights or political rights in the community more seriously. So many scholars argue that unless social and economic rights are also uh, recognized and protected, civil and political rights alone has of very little significance. So in a democracy where you find the large number of population are uh, below the poverty line or very poor, there are more chances of corruption in uh, determining the election or determining the outcome of the election in that societies are. But if the uh, citizens are enlightened or literate, they recognize the value of their civil and political rights and therefore the democracy in that country or in that society becomes more effective, more dynamic rather than controlled by money, muscle or any other kind of practices. So the rights uh, recognize uh, not only uh, the civil and political rights but also the social economic rights which we will discuss in the next class as well. So on uh, this lecture today, uh, you can refer to some of these books like uh, Papiya Sen Gupta Talukdar. You can read a chapter on rights from Rajiv Bhargam and Ashok Acharya Political Theory and Introduction. From Norman Barry, you can also read a chapter on uh, human rights. And Hoffman and Graham Introduction to Political Theory, you can refer to. And Philip or Drezek. The Oxford Handbook of Political Theory, you can also refer to the chapter on rights. So these are some of the um, uh, reference for uh, the issues regarding rights that we have discussed today. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you all. Thanks for listening.